Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Southampton Town Board to order on this 28th day of July 2020. Please rise if you're able and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing and join with me in a brief moment of silence uh, as we keep in our thoughts and prayers all of the brave men and women of our armed services who bravely defend our freedoms at home and around the world each day. Please join with me in their honor. Okay, please be seated. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman? Present. Councilwoman Lofstad? Here. Councilman Martell? Present. Councilman Bouvier? Here. Councilman Skivoni? Present. Thank you, Sandy. Sure. Okay. Um, Ryan, are you here to give us an update? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, okay. Um, I will. We've been making part of these uh, town board meetings a brief update uh, during this pandemic period. We are still under emergency orders and uh, Ryan Murphy our public safety director is here and has been very involved so uh, I will turn things over to Ryan. Sure uh, thank you Mr. Supervisor uh, not too much to uh, update at this moment um, we were informed as of today that three additional states were added to the uh, the travel restriction list by the state of New York um, Kentucky Illinois and one additional uh, Washington DC is also included in it at this point I know up until recently, Virginia and Maryland were individually included, but I don't believe D.C. had been um, identified as a standalone area. And um, uh, Puerto Rico is also on the list at this point. So it's uh, 33 or so states and a couple of territories. Um, with regards to uh, one of the questions that apparently has been coming up a lot, the state referenced on their call today, is travel sports. Um, travel sports are allowable uh, i'm talking like recreational intramural style sports not you know professional uh, league sports but travel sports are allowable to contiguous territories so um, people can travel for the purposes of sports between suffolk and nassau nassau can nassau county residents for purposes of you know travel sports can travel to suffolk county or to to queens but not beyond any of that um, as, as per the current state guidance. So that is uh, something that they specified on the uh, call to us today as well. Um, outside of that, the numbers thankfully are continuing to hold at about the 1% the point. We've seen some little ups and downs in there even since the last meeting. Uh, I believe one or two days it went up to about 185 but dropped down immediately the next day back to about 1, 1.1. 1 .1. So thankfully we're holding fairly steady at that, uh, at that transmission rate for, for the time being. Other than that, we continue to work with our uh, residents and businesses to try and, a, you know, and uh, maintain these low numbers that we're having, enforce the, the rules and regulations of the state, and on the businesses to try and provide them whatever relief we can within the confines of the, the code and the, the current executive orders. So it's kind of where we, uh, where we stand on things right now. Any questions for Ryan? All right, thank you, sir. Okay, so back to the agenda. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of our regular town board meeting of July 14th, 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Mm -hmm. uh, so Madam Clerk, would you please read the communications? The following communications have been received in the office of the town clerk. We have received public notices from the New York State Department of Public Service, public comment invite on the PSEG Long Island's uh, response plans, Suffolk County Planning Commission, letter of local determination, town of Southhold notice of adoption, uh, town of Riverhead public hearing notices, uh, village of Quag Board of Appeals public hearing notice for Dune Road in the village, village of Sagaponic public hearing notice, village of Sag Harbor's emergency order dated July 15th, village of Southampton, 
Board of Architectural Review and Historic Preservation public hearing notice for a location at 16 Gin Lane, Southampton Village. Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing notices for a location at Hampton Road, Meadow Lane, two, two different locations at Meadow Lane in the village. Village of West Hampton Beach issued their ninth emergency order on July 10th and Town Fire Districts, Eastport Fire Districts 2019 annual filing report financial uh, report filing. Annual financial disclosure statement filings from the listed individuals and letters, emails, and land use applications regarding the following. In support of CPF purchase of Spelman property in Hampton Bays and planning board application for Gold Coast Development, Jagger Lane, West Hampton. The following bid openings took place. On July 16th, furniture for town hall, vehicle fuel management system maintenance and installation. On the 17th, an RFP was open for South Fork commuter connection. And that concludes the communications for this meeting's agenda. Okay, thank you, Sunday. All right, um, we have six public hearings scheduled for today. Um, do we have a list of people wishing to be heard at these public hearings? I see there's some people in the audience. Oh, yeah, I have, hold on, I do have. Um, some of this may be for public portion. Is this list just public portion? Uh, this is public. Oh, here's one for hearings. Um, okay, so um, I'll just double check as we go through these. So, uh, Madam Clerk, would you read the first public hearing notice? Certainly. Public hearing number one on the acquisition of lands of Sullivan, Eckenbaum, Hampton Bays, and amend the CPF management stewardship plan to include the property. All right, Lisa Combrink, our CPF program manager, will introduce us. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. I'm Lisa Combrink, the uh, community preservation program manager. Uh, the first public hearing tonight is for the potential acquisition of the O'Sullivan Eichenbaum property. That's the second aerial that's there. I'll just step over and show you the property. Sorry, my glasses just fucked up a little bit. Um, uh, the property is located in Hampton Bays. It's at 52 Old Canoe Place Road. Suffolk County tax map number 900-231-1-4. It's a vacant property. It's a 1.08 acres in size. It's in the R40 zoning district. Um, you may be familiar with this area. It is um, adjacent to a approximately 13-acre property, the Balkheimer property, so it's near that uh, on South Valley Road. The property is included in the CPF project plan. It's in the Shinnecock Hills Greenway target area. It is in an archaeologically sensitive area and it's uh, currently has some pitch pine and oak forest vegetation um, and the Pominock Path runs along the eastern edge of the property and we like always to make access to that path available if possible. Uh, the property is also at a higher elevation. It's 50 feet above sea level, which is pretty high around here. Um, the purchase price um, is $295,000. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Any questions okay. for Ms. Combrick? Just a comment, just that Old Canoe Place Road is a trustee road and it's not open and in, in, in it's entirely, I believe there's a couple of driveways on it up there, but it is mostly wooded. But this property does have access. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I also wanted to point out that uh, there is a, a gazebo and a shed on the property and those would be removed um, as a condition of closing. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. All right, is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard at this public hearing, the first of the public hearings, on this possible acquisition of the O'Sullivan-Eichenbaum property? 
All right, seeing none, I'll make them. Um, uh, Jim, I'm going to just ask you a quick question. I, I'd like to make a motion to close, but mm -hmm. um, since we are having this uh, with the ability for the public to come here, are you recommending I leave the record open anyway, um, or should I close it? If, I think we could close it the, and then leave it open if you want to leave the open record open for another Two couple weeks? of weeks. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, so I, I will sure. yeah. make yeah. a motion to okay. close the public hearing, uh, but leave the record, the written record open for a two-week period. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk, the second public hearing notice. Yes. Public hearing number two on the acquisition of lands of Yoon, Hampton Bays, and amend the CPF management stewardship plan to include the property. Okay. Lisa Combrick, our CPF program manager, will again introduce this. Uh, thank you. Uh, the Yoon property is located at 53 Dune Road in Hampton Bays. I'm just going to step over and, and show you on the aerial where that is located. It's outlined in yellow. It's right here. It's adjacent to three uh, town-owned properties to the east and then other town-owned properties to the west with a couple in between, which we're doing outreach on. Uh, the property is Suffolk County Tax Map number 900-386-1-21. It's a small, it's 0 0.17 acres, um, 7,434 7, square feet in the R80 zoning district. It is a single and separate lot and has been since 1982. Um, it was, you can see on the aerial, which is from 2018, that uh, there is a structure on the property shown on the aerial that has since been demolished as ha have the structures on the adjacent properties that the town owns now to the east. Uh, this is located uh, within the Dune Road Marsh Significant Coastal Fish and Wildlife Habitat Area and it's on the bay side of Dune Road as you can see and um, we like to, uh, if possible, add on to our existing holdings on either side of the waterfront in that area. The purchase price uh, for this parcel is $350,000. Okay, any questions for Ms. Combrick? Um, did you say there were, there's no structures? Or there, no? there are no structures that have since been torn down. This is the latest aerial that we have on the GIS, which is from 2018. And I have spoken with the owner and confirmed that the house or cottage that was there has, has been demolished. What's the price again? 350000 Okay. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might mention too, this is Caddy Corner from the Tiana Life Saving Station. Oh. So, across the street. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard at this public hearing on the acquisition of lands of Yoon in Hampton Bays. All right, seeing none, I'll make the same motion as before to close the hearing but leave the record open for two weeks for written comment. All right, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, moving on to the third public hearing notice, Madam Clerk. Public hearing number three on the use of special supplemental community development block grant COVID funds to be awarded to the town of Southampton through the Suffolk County Consortium. All right, and Diana Weir, our Director of uh, Human Services, is here in Community Development. What's your official title? <laughs> Housing, and community, Housing and Community Development. One of those, yeah. Thank you. Uh, good evening, and thank you for uh, hearing this public comment. Um, the Coronavirus Aid Relief Economic Security Act, CARES, on March 27th, the public law funded through this federal, coming down through the county, um, housing and urban development, that they will receive special supplemental uh, allocation. As part of the Suffolk County Consortium, we will be receiving an additional $45,000 this year. Because the money needed to be spent quickly, and it is for COVID relief, the time frames for public notification and the time frame for comments was uh, 
shortened very much so. So we had five days to publish the notice, which we did. That's why we're here today. And uh, I have five more days. If anyone else has to comment in writing, they will be able to do that. Uh, the $45,000, $5,000 will be administrative funds, which we haven't received in many years, so that was very kind because it will take some paperwork, obviously, and this board. So that's what we're here to see and talk about. And uh, if anyone has public comment, that's what we're here for. All right, thank you, Diana. A any questions for Diana Weir? Yeah, I have one. What kind of things can they be used for? It has to be COVID related, and it's for the agencies that are doing that work on the ground, basically. Like so food pantries? Food pantries, counseling services um, for COVID patients or family members. So anything that is COVID related. And then, of course, they'll have to report back. And the regular HUD process will continue for this money as well as for the others. Thank you. Do we have a list of who is receiving the, the recipients of the money? We, we have targeted the agencies that are working with us this year through the other CDBG funds because that's what they're doing. So we just want to hear from the public. Right. Okay. And the resolution ultimately will be, will it specify or will it just be giving yes, your office? Yes, it'll specify. It'll specify the agencies and that resolution will be at your next board meeting because we have to leave it open. So for the public is days. being asked to comment on just using the supplemental money? Yeah, and just COVID accepting relief? it. Yes. Just accepting it. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Diana. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard on this public hearing on the potential use of uh, community development block grant money for COVID relief? Um, seeing none, um, should we leave, be leaving this record open? Is it time sensitive? No, because we have five days. We still have five days if people want to mail in their comments until August 5th. Okay, so why don't we leave the record open for five days then? That's fine. Thank you. All right, so we'll, we'll close the hearing for uh, oral comment and leave the record open for five days for written comment. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's the motion. Uh, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Public hearing number four, <clears throat> to consider amending town code chapter 330 zoning to add section 330-333 entitled protection of unmarked graves. Okay, so I just, I'll just briefly explain what this is. Um, we have uh, adjourned this a number of times because uh, uh, we wanted to allow the public the greatest opportunity to be heard on this and the conditions of you know, related to the pandemic and make it hard for that type of uh, discourse. Um, but this particular legislation establishes a series of steps that must be followed if somebody encounters in a development project what are likely human remains, and uh, including stopping activity and entering in this process that could determine whether they are human remains and if they are human remains. Um, how they should be handled. Should they be avoided? Should they be reinterred to a different property or corner of this property? Um, how is, what is the extent of the burial area? If it is a burial, are there other burials? Those types of things. Um, most states have something like this on the books. New York State does not. Uh, we're one of four states that do not. And uh, this would create a local law that establishes the steps this really became um, apparent that the need was there for this when uh, human remains were encountered on Hawthorne Road in the Shinnecock Hills area. And uh, we looked to see what um, laws were in place that could allow us to uh, investigate the matter and avoid uh, the desecration of human remains. And uh, worked a long time on this, but it has been tabled for a long time or at least adjourned for a long time. And I'm going to recommend again that it be adjourned um, to the evening meeting in August. And uh, not sure the location of that meeting yet, but if we're able to have a meeting where the public can come and participate in a easier way, then maybe that will be when we can uh, you know, finally act on this. So. Uh, I, I do want to open it up to the public if they want to be heard. This is not the moratorium. I know some people want to speak on the moratorium. This again, this is applies throughout the entire town, um, except the incorporated areas, the villages. 
but anywhere within the town other than the incorporated villages, if you encounter likely human remains, stop construction, follow these steps, including, you know, the investigating possible preservation of the property is one of the steps too. So, um, Sunday, just bef before I go to the public, um, what is the date of the August meeting? August 26th? August meeting, the night meeting you're talking about? Yes. Okay, just one moment. It is the 25th. August 25th mm -hmm. is the possible date that this would be adjourned to. All right, uh, is there anyone from the public who wishes to be heard uh, on this public hearing? Okay, uh, seeing none, I, I will make a motion to adjourn the public hearing until August 25th. Second. Um, seconded by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Madam Clerk, the fourth hearing notice. Public hearing number five. To consider enacting Town Code Chapter 323, imposing a moratorium on certain development actions within particular areas of the hamlet of Shinnecock Hills. Okay, uh, this one also has been adjourned a number of times. This is uh, the first of two possible moratorium uh, bills that would create a six month um, moratorium on certain construction uh, unless some basic archaeological review is done. There are two areas in this one. Um, They're both designated on a state recognized map. There is the sugar loaf area, uh, which is understood to be um, the ancestral burial ground primarily of the Shinnecock Nation and the Fort Hill area, which was an early habitation area. Within the Sugarloaf area, uh, it would apply to, uh, if you need a building permit that involves excavation, it could not move forward unless you completed this basic archeological review. Um, and in the Fort Hill area, only brand new homes would be subject to that criteria. And uh, the idea of the moratorium was to allow the town to sort of study this issue to figure out if additional measures are needed to protect these uh, culturally sensitive areas. And uh, we have uh, tabled this a number of times, or tabled it, tabling is not necessarily the right term, but adjourned the meeting, the, the public hearing several times. And I will be recommending we adjourn it again, but there are some people, I believe, who want to be heard on this. Now, I'll just distinguish this from the next public hearing, um, which includes a, a larger area, it, it's Sugarloaf, but it also goes along Shinnecock Bay uh, into the area where Hawthorne Road is, um, where we had that recent um, incident until I guess it's Peconic, I, know, I don't actually remember the name, there's Peconic Road or yeah, sort of the end? That goes, that's like kind of the western border of the, of the moratorium. Right, area. that's sort of the western border. So. Um, and in that area would, would be the same restrictions as in the Sugarloaf area. Um, so at this point, if somebody wants to be heard, if you want to be heard just on the second one, that's fine. Um, then just wait for the second one. But on this, the third one, okay, I don't have anything that specifically says it, but I do have somebody who I know who wants to be heard about the moratoriums in general but it says public hearing number five which is the this are essentially the same i mean just except for the area right all right yeah so i see so this no, this is number five right yeah this is number five so we do have one name here and then number six is the uh the one that has that slightly larger area so let me call up a pamela glazer architect um, who notified us that she did want to um, weigh in on this and she is uh, representing clients who own property in the moratorium area thank you Pamela. Pamela typically we afford three minutes to make your comments known if if you need additional time I'm sure that won't be a problem no I mostly I, I, I wanted to know what whether or not the moratorium would just be building no building at all or would it be under consideration of each particular property and I think at this point in time, as we know, the, it's, it's really crazy busy out here in terms of people wanting to improve their homes and build. And, and I, I think it's, it's going to be quite a uh, 
shock if there's an area that no one can, can do any construction on. So I, I, for me, I, I, I'm very sensitive to this issue and I think it's important to, to address the Shinnecock Nation's concerns and their ancient burial sites and it, it makes all the sense, but it, it, I don't see where stopping building at all would solve any sort of problem. If, if there's a protocol put in place, um, then each particular property that's going to need you know, construction or excavation could be considered at the time. I mean, when we, when we apply for a building permit, we have to go to the engineering department to, us, to decide whether or not our property is uh, problematic for drainage, road drainage, et cetera. I mean, this would just be one more additional application. I think the application is going to be this sure. tall. But at, that we would say, okay, we're in the Shinnecock area. We're in a highly sensitive area. Let's apply, and then there would be some kind of protocol, whether it would be, you know, an archaeological expert to come out and take a look. Is right. this an area? Um, is this a low point, a high point? I'm sure that there were areas that were, were more prevalent for, for burial grounds than others. And if you happen to be in one of those, and, you know, they could be under, they could be, you know, you can have a lot inspection and it, it could say, okay, yes, and then if they needed to do a, a number of test borings or something to establish whether or not it, it seems to be that the area is, you know, not been touched or maybe there's already a house on it and somebody's doing an addition and they need excavation, it's already been dug up, you know, so there's lots of things to consider and I think that's, it needs to be taken care of on a per property basis as opposed to a blanket Right. Let's not build for the next three months. Let's not build for the next six months because it doesn't really solve any of the problem. It just pushes it down the road further. And I could try to, if, yeah. if I may, try to answer that. Mm -hmm. First, it's, all, it's not all Shinnecock Hills. Okay. It's very specific areas. Um, in that Fort Hill area, it's only brand new homes. Mm -hmm. It's not somebody's doing addition, somebody's putting in a pool, garage. It's a new home on a a vacant piece of property. Yes, yeah, so I'm and they doing would be that one of those right now, yeah. Okay, they would be required to uh, to be exempted from this moratorium mm -hmm. and proceed. They would have to do stage 1A and B archaeology, which is one is more of like a, like you're saying, to look at the property, mm -hmm. literature type of search, um, and I think 1B is some test holes. Okay. To see, if, you know, and it would be like in the area where they plan to dig the foundation mm -hmm. with the hope that they would, you know, avoid because uh, if they actually build, dug that foundation and it was culturally sensitive they're going to be held up anyway that's great. Um, but it, you know it, it has some benefit to the applicant as well to help them avoid it maybe they would want to change their plan slightly mm -hmm. um, and in that sugar loaf area it would apply yeah, it would apply to other um, building permits that require excavation and it's the same thing stage 1a and b mm -hmm. So it could apply to a pool or a garage or something like that in that Sugarloaf area. Um, once they have done that archaeological review, their permit can proceed. Yes. They're no longer held up by the moratorium. Okay. Right. So the moratorium really isn't a just a stop build. No, as no there are so exemptions that's, and exclusions. As it's an happen. automatic exemption if you've done stage one mm -hmm. A and B archaeology and it's come up clean. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't come up clean, that's different. Well, right? yeah, <laughs> of course, of course. Right. Right. So that, that sort of clears it up. I mostly wanted to see what what the process would be and what we're looking forward to. And there are a number of <laughs> anthropologists, archaeologists that do this work mm -hmm. in the area. Mm -hmm. I won't say it doesn't add to the cost. It does. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> it does. I, you know, a, a few thousand dollars potentially. Yeah, you know, I know. I'm just... You know, with the hope of avoiding desecrating a grave. Yes. You well, know, and that's a decision, yeah. a policy decision. Yeah. Well, I, I can see how... How, how important that is so that's and I'm, and I'm not questioning that I'm just questioning the process of right. what the process would be okay no thank you Pamela. thank you okay. thank you okay uh, and, and again I will be moving to adjourn this so um, we're not anticipating a vote uh, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard I'd like to be heard okay step forward please identify yourself for our records this is for this application I believe this is no, no, public portion. Public portion, Tiffany, or this is this is just this is for these public areas. This is only on this uh, potential oh, moratorium. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I understand that you're yeah, here for another one. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, 
Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on this public hearing? Okay, uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn it. Second. Until 25th. August um, 25th. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, the sixth public hearing. Public hearing number six, to consider enacting town code chapter 323, imposing a moratorium on certain development actions within particular areas of the hamlet of Shinnecock Hills. All right, uh, I've already explained what this does. This just has the additional area. Um, there is you know, a number of additional properties that would be subject to the same restrictions as the Sugarloaf area, which is um, could not do any excavation building per any permit building permit that required excavation would uh, have to uh, do stage one stage stage one a and b archaeology um, so there are more properties that are affected by this um, are there people who wish to be heard at this public hearing okay um, seeing none I will make the same motion to adjourn it uh, till August 25th. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that concludes our public hearings. And we are now moving on to public portion. Again, uh, each speaker is afforded three minutes uh, to make their comments known. I have a number of individuals who asked to be heard in public portion. And uh, Um, Tiffany, I don't have you on this list. So, I didn't know we had yeah, I, 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 yes, of course. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna, I'm putting you on the list. Okay, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I, uh, I will take them in the order though uh, that we've received their request. So, uh, Diana Tribble, is Diana Tribble present? Just look at the list, maybe a couple weeks ago. Once. Uh, suggestions, wants to give some insights and suggestions related to the pandemic. Uh, okay, I'll move on to Diane Tribble is not here. Okay, um, let's move on to uh, Henry Rywartz. That's her husband. That's Diane Tribble's husband. Is Henry w Rywartz here? I'm looking at the only man in the audience, but <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So let's let's skip uh, Mr. Rywartz, um, and let's move on to Gail Mercott. Here we go. I am live body. <laughs> May I remove my mask? Sure. It's, yeah, it's up sure. to you. Yes, as long as you're with uh, six feet away from anyone else. You may. Okay. Uh, my name is Gail Marcott. Uh, I live at 7 Bayview Avenue in Hampton Bays. I'm here on behalf of the Hampton Groves Beach Association. I'm speaking on behalf of the entire community. Um, we have a problem down by us. Our property is located just west of the Shinnecock Canal. Um, and east of the uh, of Westwoods, the Indian property. We have a private beach there, and we have just been totally inundated with people coming fishing, mostly at night. They, they arrive right before 9, and they, they have uh, tents, children, diapers, food, which they all leave behind when they leave. They're on a private beach, which they're not supposed to be. We've called the cops on many occasions, and they, they've been really good about it. They come down, they respond, they walk down there, they move them, they tell them when they're on private property, they have to walk all the way down to the Indian reservation with all their gear on and everything to ask those people to vacate the property. And as soon as they're gone five minutes, everybody's back. They're there all night long, they sleep on the beach. Um, I have pictures here, may I? You may. Can you submit them through the clerk? Town clerk. Uh, mask, mask. Mask. Oh. <laughs> Good, thank you. Sorry, getting old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on, off, on, on. You can just let them down, please. Thank you. 
Okay, you, you can, it's up to you, but you can remove your mask now. The, um, there's a, there are parking signs there that say parking by full season permit, May 23rd to Labor Day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 8.30, they start showing up, and they're there all night. During the day, during those hours, of course, we can go over there, and people can't park there because none of them have stickers. There's not one car that has a sticker. All the overnight ones and everything else, nobody has stickers. We're not trying to stop, you know, residents from fishing on the canal or whatever. We're trying to stop this influx of pe people who are coming from out of town and just fishing there all night long. They leave hooks on the beach, in the water. Um, I must say we've taken them out about 20. I don't even know why they wouldn't want to keep them, but they're two hooks with a sinker on the end, and they're all over the beach. Uh, you know, people have taken them out of the water too. As I said, the garbage. If you go, um, if you go on the rocks to try to fish here, it's impossible anymore. Not that it's impossible, but the garbage there they finish fishing what they've eaten what they've brought in with them goes right down in between the rocks and they walk away when you go down there to fish you can't even get near it because of the stink and the flies are just all over you because of the garbage that's left there you know our community is really having a serious problem with this there have been a couple of fights over it when people are asked to leave and they don't for the most part, they do, but 10 minutes later, they're back again. So we're here to ask if you could please change this. Um, I know Flying Point Road has 24-hour no parking unless you have a permit. Gail, all the town roads, every one of them, there's no overnight parking. Then why is this allowed? Um, Good question. And the police don't stop working at the end of the day. And you, you have been calling them, so. Oh, they, they respond, too. And they go down. We've, we've in fact, called them sometimes you know, two or three times a night. You know, it's possible we could specifically post it, no overnight parking or, or no parking certain hours or tow-away zone or whatever. I mean, we could talk certainly to the police about it. Um, you know, we are reviewing all the road ends right now. And... Uh, some of these areas um, were completely unrestricted prior to the pandemic. Yeah, we were not. You, we had parking. You, you had parking for anyone. But you had to have a permit. Oh, it was, nine, it was to, not, to 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I think so. You had yeah. even, that even prior, that was by okay. sticker on. By permit. Yeah. yeah. This here clearly says uh, May 23rd to Labor Day, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So they come at 9 p.m. Right, they would. Yeah, they're all night long. They would probably think that after 9 p.m. they don't need a town permit. That's a not. We need to fix that. Yeah, yeah, it's not clear. Yeah, yeah I think that. Yeah, there's no overnight parking, but the, it should just say parking by have, at least during the pandemic. Have time it should just say it should season, say seasonal parking only from May to. Right, parking by permit only. Right. But it shouldn't have to specify the hours. Yeah, like yeah, on the well, at least during the pandemic, because that is the executive order I issued for road ends. Yes, I read it. And it sounds like the signage is then incorrect. So it at, at, at no time can anybody park there that doesn't have a town sticker. Based on my the way, it should be order. nothing good comes out of I, I, I parking here. I, I, I can't say what will happen when the pandemic ends. What the proper restrictions are. Uh, whether this will continue to be a problem. That is something the board is looking at, um, sort of reviewing all these road ends and trying to come up with which ones need which you know, protections. But under the executive order that I have continued to issue um, at these road ends, it's parking by permit only at all times and within a certain distance. I think it's 500 feet, which maybe isn't enough, but 500 feet to the road end. Um, and that would apply at 9 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. We and have no signs. overnight point. Sir, we have signs that were put up a long time ago that go clear around that whole area there that there's no parking. Mm -hmm. So we haven't in previous years had a problem. Mm -hmm. But this year, and I, of course, I know, you know, because of the pandemic starting in March, we were inundated. But, of course, we had no control because our signs weren't, you know, before 
I think they were Memorial Day. But, uh, you know, as I said, there's nothing that good that would come out of this parking overnight. And we just, you know, ask you if you could address it. Do you have any idea as to... Well, it's, again, it sounds like the executive order would affect the first 500 feet of that. After that, um, it, if somebody wanted to park after 9 p.m., they probably could. They just couldn't park overnight. Um, you're asking, I think, for that entire area to be 24 hours a day, town parking only. At some point, you know, that area ends. So I, I, maybe uh, Rick Martell, if you, you want to take this on. And yeah, we'll definitely look it over, Julie and I. I mean, that's Sunset Road right next to the canal, which yes. is the road you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It has taken the brunt of us moving people from other beaches. They've really congregated on your beach there. Uh, we've even had some young people who took it upon themselves to try to clean, clean the rocks. But the deeper they great. got, the worse it got. That so was they my got, family. Yeah, they, they gave were, up on it. Yeah, um, sick and, from it. You know, unfortunately, when I do my rounds on the different beaches during the day, it looks cozy. There's a half a dozen cars there. There's a couple people fishing. You know, it looks great. But like you say, once it gets dark, it does get inundated. So, I think there could be a solution of just no overnight parking in that that spot. Be easy enough. And if you watch the Michutes Beach closes, I think at nine. I don't go there because we have our own beach. But at nine o'clock, you watch them all come off the canal over there, the jetty, and five minutes later, we're inundated. Mm. So I know you hear me. I, I think you understand. No, we appreciate Does that. Does anybody have any questions? Right. Or? Yeah, I think the difference with Meshut is that's within the county park. Yeah, it's county right? park. Yeah, but even that, they're closing at 7 o'clock, and so. they're tiptoeing along the side, and they're doing the same thing on the other side of the canal that they're doing on your side. Yeah. Yeah. And parking in the marina parking that doesn't require mm. a sticker or didn't back when I was Right. doing my rounds. So they're still fishing there on that side too. I haven't been there in a while but that was one of the the, the two ends of those jetties were another problem area. Yeah definitely. Well as I said they move after dark then from the jetties you know to our beach and down to the uh, Shinnecock uh, to Westwoods there and I honestly don't think that they know they're there because they don't usually like anyone on their property so but you know, as I said, the police have been very nice in all their equipment and everything to walk all the way down there on a hot night and move them. You know, we've, we've been, it's been just fantastic with the response that we've gotten from oh, them. Good. But as I said, 10 minutes later, everybody's right back. And I feel bad taking the police off what they should be doing, you know, to come down and do silly stuff like that. Yeah. So, you know, I, there's two liaisons to the Hampton Bays area. Both happen to live in the Hampton Bays area. So Councilwoman Lofstad and Councilman Martell. And it sounds like they're, they're eager to work with you on looking into this. So um, I just ask that you contact their offices, okay? And, I will do. And they and can I'll make some I'll leave my uh, name and phone number there. Great. And if you wish to contact me back, I'll, uh, I'll visit you. We'll be there. down there. Can I Thank you. you. Escort you. All right. Bring a fishing pole <laughs> <laughs> or a bathing suit. Well, not a banana. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, the, the next name I have here is not asking to speak, just to attend, and that's uh, Lynn Mercott. Um, correct, Lynn? You didn't want to say anything? No. Okay, thank you. All right. It, <laughs> okay. Um, so, Tiffany, you're up. Tiffany Gavin. As we are revisiting brought to the town's attention on March 16th a landslide that has occurred from the removal of a 70 foot long bulkhead in its entirety without any land containment. We also learned that there were no permits from the town trustees, the DEC, Army Corps of Engineers, no engineering on the project. The only permit that's shown at the house is a building permit and it's for an in-ground pool. There is no wetland conservation permit that is also required for the bulkhead removal. I've had four environmental consultant experts down by the site that have all determined just dredging is not a remediation to what has occurred. The initial landslide, when I first measured it in March, was 112 feet long. It now exceeds 180 feet. And because this, the land is sliding from the upland into the canal, it's also sliding from underneath. It, re, it 
take, it took the shoal across the way to an entirely different shape. It's higher in the water, now crosses the canal. So now we have these two opposing shorelines meeting. Before, before this landslide has occurred, and I know you don't like that word, Mr. Schneiderman, but it is in fact a landslide, it was a clean, contained line. The bulkhead was holding back land for 54 years. The trustees issued a permit in July of 1966. This is what the canal mouth now looks like. Are you submitting these? You, you could look. Yeah. These are. These so it would be easier for us to see. Yeah. If you're gonna. I took drone pictures. I just put your mask or shield yeah. on. Yeah. Mister. I don't understand what environmental. Are these are copies we're, of the same thing. No, they're different. And today. We we I can't hear you unless you go back to the mic. I'm sorry. For, for the uh, for the television. Thank you. Today, there's still debris. There's still rebar. There's still brick. Mr. Shea says all of this is removed as he goes down to this site weekly. I'm not really understanding at this point in time why we don't have a keen eye on a remediation plan in this area, considering there's no permits to have removed this. The DEC, Carrie Gallagher, is looking into this. Army Corps of Engineers, Bart DiMartino is looking into this. This isn't a town only issue at this point. We need to understand that you can't alter navigation. It's completely stopped. We have no tidal flow at low tide. So the Paines Creek coliform water that is now five times higher is sitting in this canal for 12 hours a day stagnant. The odor is horrific. Under the codes and guidelines of the town of Southampton, you can't alter navigation, you can't alter tidal flow. There, if a do-nothing approach to a bulkhead removal is considered, it must be proven, this is your town codes, that no negative impact would occur to the water flow and the surrounding areas. I think we could very clearly see the surrounding areas have been very altered and negatively in affected. The health in the residents and surrounding areas cannot be compromised. Uplands cannot fall in the water. Soil cannot fall in the water. Demo and construction debris cannot sit in the water. This was all avoidable. A plan Wait, was, was it, What you just read, Tiffany, was that? All in your town codes. For the construction of a bulkhead or for the removal of a bulkhead? That's for Anything that you're doing, any construction under your town codes, got pro procedures and guidelines by the DEC, you cannot alter a waterway. Okay. You can't dump into a waterway. You cannot impede navigation at any level. Okay. And all of these things have 100% happened. This is the plan that was permitted or somebody looked at. So there is. No, remove the bulkhead, and there is a very clean line of upland, and here's the water canal. There is three feet of upland that was being held back by this bulkhead on the water canal side. There was absolutely no way this is a viable plan. It would be impossible for it to be executed. Three feet of land was being held for 54 years. Within four months of its removal, we had a 112-foot landslide. Now we're at 182. It changed the shoal. We have zero navigation, zero water flow. No permits. Only one permit is present. None of the neighbors were aware of any of this. Why? No permits. You couldn't drive past the house. The only thing you see is the pool permit. You don't know what's happening, happening on the back end. The bulkhead was removed October 24th, 2019. It's mostly, it's not primary <coughs> residence. My husband and I happened to go out on a March paddle and we see this dirt. As time goes on, it goes, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So the person who designed this plan offered a, a remediation plan of digging, dredging, and they want us to do this every year. The homeowner who caused this wants us to dredge it every year. So, now I don't know about you guys, when I dig a hole in sand, 
it's just going to fill right back up unless that land is contained. The bulkhead in its entirety should never have been removed. Regardless of the classification of that bulkhead, whether you deemed it functional or non-functional, there was no land containment to mitigate that upland from sliding into that canal. This was completely avoidable. If there was another entity involved, another entity would have said to wetlands or whomever is the chief environmental analyst, it's, it, this is an impossible plan to execute. Now, to remediate it, we understand, we're being told, you have to test the land to see where the land could be put back. And it's arduous, we're being told. So to clean it up, we have to go through surveys, topographies, water, hydro, all of these things. But was any of the land tested before it was allowed to fall into the water? Because it's been sitting in that canal since October, where I fish, I clam, I crab. Every day, I'm finding a cooked crab at the end of the canal because the sea floor is not being flushed anymore. There's no water coming in and out of this canal. We always had high flow tide and low flow. Now we have no low flow. There's no water coming in, completely stopped. High tide, there is still water coming in. No longer is nav the canal navigable by motorboat because the deepest part of that channel the canal was where the landslide hit. We understand there was shoaling on the other side, but now it's just one big, massive landslide. It needs to be opened up. We need to get water. It's our most beautiful natural resource. The destruction of this, how we're fighting to remediate this, is, is, is confusing to all of us. Why would we want to block off this waterway. 30 seconds. That's all, it's fine. All right. It's been six um, minutes, I just. Now I know you have come here before with this. So I've been fighting this, honestly, no, since I know. March and 16th. I did, I, I did speak with Carrie McGallagher from the DC, and I, I did speak with Marty Shea some, but I also, I know Tommy John Scavoni has also been working on this, and, and I don't know to what degree, Jim, you've been involved yeah, in I terms agree. of the code piece of it. Um, Tommy John, I know you've probably been closest to this. You've been there a number of times. You want to? Yeah, Miss Cavan has um, has presented uh, before this board. Now uh, this is the third time here, right? And um, also at the trustee board. Yep. I believe that was two weeks ago, and um, and and there was some significant conversation at that trustee board, and that's yep. something that I have to review because Very really, <laughs> there was significantly discussed. You're right. Because um, it's it's important here. Because really, what you are asking for is to reinstall a bulkhead and then dredge that what you're calling a uh, well navigable waterway. I remember it, and I know what it is, and I know where the sand uh, at least was coming from. And I we we reviewed uh, historic uh, photos of the shoaling and and where it is. Um, so there was a ruling from the conservation board on this. And uh, you know, so what you're asking is to reverse that and then construct a new bulkhead. I'm, I'm assuming is that is that why you're here, and then to dredge it. Correct. Okay. So or a um, land containment of some sort. It okay. could be the quarry Understood. Lots, it could be. And since the trustees have primary jurisdiction over the waterways, I must meet with them and fully flush out. No pun intended. What? Okay, that was bad. Um, really, what? Uh, you know what, what they were, what, what their position is on this, and you know we have to talk to our legal department as well. This is, and I understand your frustration, and I know where you live, and I've been down there many times, um, and uh, I also you know grew up in the area, and I know what that was um, over the years as well. So you know I, I will continue to work with with our legal department on this. No permits. How does no violations are on this property. I don't, I'm, not, I'm at a loss why anybody would pull a permit in this town if there's no violations for not even pulling permits and you could do whatever you want and destroy somebody's area. How are, how are you not frustrated? They had no permit to remove the bulk of There's no permits. There's no tr trustee permits, no Army Corps, no DEC. The only permit on this house right now 
And that bulkhead was removed in October is a building permit for a pool. Riparian rights, you cannot alter the waterways of a, a navigable canal. You cannot alter tidal flow. Just based on that, what I want and what I'm asking for is not unreasonable. What they did is completely ruin this canal. This environment that was once so beautiful, they ruined it with the removal of a, a bulkhead that was there holding back land for 54 years. Explain. It, we're fighting it. I read the ruling March. from the Conservation Board. And Who's so the Conservation Board? Mr. I, I, Shea? I don't want to argue with you. No, no, no. no, no okay. Uh, Mr. Shea is you know, chief environmental analyst, but he, and he, he consults the, he's, he's a consultant for the Conservation Board. Uh, he reviews most of the, or all the applications that are before the Conservation Board. Okay, so the Conservation Board, where is their permit? Jim, Jim do you it's need, uh, you know, my understanding is this, this bulkhead was in a state of disrepair. Yeah, I think that's different than what Tiffany is saying, that it actually was actually holding something back. Um, we have pictures showing it was functional. That it was, it was functional. But we, According well, to Mr. That was Shea. my understanding from Mr. Shea that it was, uh, he, that the Conservation Board or Mr. Shea himself actually had um, asked that the bulkheading be removed. It was, he felt it was in, in a state of disrepair. And, um, and he also was a condition of the permit or the, appro or the removal of the approval to remove the bulkhead uh, was to uh, com remove the rest of the bulkheading the, the, that, was, that was still kind of falling into the canal, I guess. Um, so th that is supposed to be done. If it hasn't been done yet, then that, that's part of the approval that the And did that approval, she's saying there was no permit, but there was some approval. Did it have a revegetation plan or anything to stabilize the slope? Um, I'm not ex familiar exactly with the exact terms of it. Uh, Marty is very familiar with this situation, obviously. Uh, if you he's look, been, he's been. Uh, I don't. I've talked to him many, many times. I don't believe there was any remediation plan. I the remediation I part of it was certainly to clean up the rest of the of the, of the old bulkheading. That was that was definitely that part of it was was part of the requirement. Um, I know there was an opportunity. I know there was thoughts about going out to visit the site. I know it's been speaking with Ann Welker, who was uh, the trustee that's assigned to this area. I spoke with Ann a number of times on this, and as well as Ed Warner. Um, Ed was supposed to go out. I was actually going to see a time when I could go to the site with Ed. Ed seems to be very familiar, you know, as well as probably with uh, Tommy John, um, with the area. He grew up in the area. He's familiar with the, the situations involved. Uh, and then, subsequent to some of my conversations with Ed, the trustees did have a hearing where Ms. Gavin spoke uh, in a Zoom meeting, and uh, I have not spoken with any of the trustees since that meeting. But were they looking up to dredge this out and remove s sediments from the area? Is that are they seeking a permit? To, to the that? trustees, no, yeah. no. And, uh, there was there was some discussions, and there was a recommendation. I'm not sure there was a. I don't know if Ms. Gavin knows who it was. There was an expert who. Who spoke at the Zoom at the Zoom trustees meeting uh, that day? Who recommended uh, some removal of uh, uh, <coughs> sediment. sediment from the area and to build that in? No exact the terminology, but sort of like a half bulkhead. Is that what it was? A low silt bulkhead. A, a low low silt bulkhead, and as part of the installation of that, they would they would be removing uh, some of the sediment in the area to to put the. Uh, this low silk uh, bulkhead in place, and that was something that the trustees. Would that be at the water line or more upland? Mm -hmm. You have something like that in front of your home that you installed about four or five years ago. Yeah, it was. Is that what's called a, a low silk bulkhead? Low sill. Low sill. Low sill. Got the it. neighbor Didn't hear property you. has low sill. Uh -huh. Ours is 18, 18 inches. Oh, I don't know what a low sill is, but right. what, what the we had an engineer look at the property and just, they said because of the slope of the property and how water runs off, there is a very easy, for them, an easy calculation to show how much upland should have been graded before any removal of the bulkhead should have happened. So you're maintaining that when you installed your bulkhead that the water flow that occurred at that time was much greater than it is much today? Much greater. Much greater. It and is, do you have any engineering calculations for that when you installed your bulkhead? Because you had an old one too and, and it was installed 
and I'm, I'm just wondering if you have some historic engineering water flow calculations of that small creek. It's not a creek, it's a it, man-made canal from... It's a dug canal. No, no yeah, I didn't. Back in the day. I didn't have any. We didn't but get permits and stuff. The, uh, it's <laughs> the mouth of the canal that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And, and I it's know. causing the seafloor to rise or change at that back end because it's not being flushed out. So it might, uh, it sounds like, I mean, you're here because you believe that, you know, the town or its agent um, required a removal of a dilapidated bulkhead that you said was actually holding back the material without any plan for what would happen to that sediment. And now that sediment, in your opinion, has choked off that hand dug canal and changed the ecology of that area. Um, I, I did speak with Marty. He he doesn't agree with most of that. He said that it wasn't doing anything. The said, let me know, I just I'm not taking a side here. Okay. He's, he's saying that that sediment did not move into that area. Um, so he's basically, you know, he's not here to speak for himself. We could get him here, but you're basically asking. I think you're asking the town board to to fix this problem as you see it. That. It was our agent who caused the problem, you know, who made this applicant remove this, which led to this problem. Um, you know, I, I, I've been sort of focused on how do we fix the problem? The, is there a dredging project? I, it, it should be returning the bulkhead, typically no. So should materials be removed and the slope stabilized? Um, that's sort of been my, my focus and, and who does that dredge work? But uh, we certainly could, you know, get some testimony from, from Marty. But is this, uh, Jim, is this the right venue to air the grievance? And, and it really isn't. I mean, this board is not really. Should, they be going, should, should we go on a conservation board? It's, it really is a conservation board matter. Um, I have tried to but speak I, I do with want to be helpful, Tiffany. I'm not right. trying to say you, you shouldn't be here. You have the absolute right to be here and air it to the town board. I, I just want to make sure that your issue gets addressed and right. fully vetted. And right. it might be more proper for you to appear in front of conservation board um, since they require the removal of that bulkhead. Where is that, where is that permit that they required that removal or approved it? It depends on when it was issued. It may it may have been prior to permitting time. I just don't know what the. I, I you said there was the a pool I permit. I foiled the property. There's no permit. Was there a? Condition? There may not have been permits at the time that that was required. So That's you the say that why a lot of these boards were created. So were they not required? This property owner removed that dilapidated. Oh, no, the, the was, permit this, had to go this, through this conservation year. board this is October review. October of 2019, John. Right. Yeah. Oh, and it, oh, and yes, it was yeah, reviewed. And a permit. That's your venue. That's really where this yeah. needs to be discussed because that's the interface also with the trustees. They have jurisdiction and yeah. so they have it's to the go the permitting. Some of the permitting, as you rightly said, is with the DEC and other yeah. agencies depending on, on what's being proposed. And I've reached out to the DEC and I have not heard back from Mr. Um, who's it? Andrew? Uh, Andrew Walker. Andrew, Andrew Walker. I have, I've reached out a few times I haven't, and I've reached out to the regional council and I have. I haven't heard back on this specific issue of directly. I have a, a, a theory the or a hypo. A hy Let me create a situation. If this landslide fell off the front of the property into the street and it grew to 181 feet and drivers could no longer navigate that street, would you say, oh, well, you want us to do what with that? Well, it's, great. it's a great analogy. So why, why is this being pushed to different agencies, very clearly something has gone wrong, whether it was done on purpose or on accident. It's almost a moot point. So who would investigate whether the sediments of a property were not contained? I know with roads, as the, the example mm -hmm. that Tiffany brings up, mm -hmm. I know during construction you have to yeah, it's clear on there. I, uh, the right. waters from your own property and the sediments. Is right. there something similar with the water? And her property is continuing to road. Her femur flood line my, is at 30 feet. My suggestion was to, I reached out to Bay Constables and to, and to the trustees, and we were going to go and look at the site, so invite someone from the Bay Constables and the trustees' office and, and Marty. I think that's the three agencies that would be involved with the town. I have reached out to Mr. Walker from D.C. I have not heard back from him. 
Um, you know, and there's different opinions, as you say, Mr. Supervisor, about what happened. I don't think this is as clear. I appreciate the the, uh, the comparison, but I, I don't think it's the same. How is it not uh, well, clear we... that laws were broken? Well, no, I'm just saying it's not clear that it's clear how this. If somebody dumps 125 feet of soil onto the road, here, this is a tidal. When I when I speak with people who, I'm not an expert in this area at all, but when I speak to people who who know about this, they say. You know, a lot of things cause sands to move. It's a tidal, it's a very shallow tidal area. And, you know, and I've looked at the aerials that uh, Councilman Scarboni had brought up at one of our meetings. Look at the aerials over the years, 60 years. You know, this, the sand is shifting here all the time, you know. So it's not as clear as, it, as if somebody's dumping it on the road. I certainly appreciate your concerns. And it might be a contributing factor. It might not be the only factor. Uh, we don't know. It, right. it, it's I've seen other areas. This this is not the first time something like this has happened, you know, where sand shifts along a shoreline this and closes a shift, off. Though, with all due respect, three feet. No, I understand. If you go out land. by, you know, Conscience Point, if you try to get out that inlet, it's you have to, you know, kind of twist your way around. That has completely shifted over. Um, if you had a neighboring property that a wall was holding back their cliff from falling onto your property. And you you come home one day and you see that wall is gone. Are you going to say, well, I guess it's okay? <laughs> or are you going to say land shifts? No. If, if bulkheads are a necessary evil, they are. This is a navigable tidal canal. Clearly, it's been altered. It's not a shift of land because of Mother Nature. It's a shift of land because a bulkhead that was holding back land was removed. It was in place for 54 years. Right. I don't know that people are forced to maintain those bulk. Like if somebody wants to get rid of their own bulkhead and have some sort of beach in front of their property, I guess they would go through a permitting process and those questions would be asked about how you're going to maintain the slopes and things like that. Or um, you can't alter a navigation by you your know, own codes. Again, Marty is saying that this isn't the cause. I, I think it's important if we're going to continue to have this conversation at this board that Marty be at least allowed to present his side of the story and then we can decide what we should do next here. Well, if Marty this board is the right board Mr. to Shea. address your issue. Mr. Shea thinks, what were you going to say? I just, his, he's our chief environmental analyst and I want to get the man's qualifications at this board sure. meeting. No, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Please um, go on. Can we? I, and and I, I think that that meeting. I, look, I'm happy to meet with you and Marty mm -hmm. together in a room. I, I don't know if I'm the right person, but I'm happy to listen to both sides of the story, see what he has to say. But I really think that that's sort of a meeting that should happen with the trustees, mm -hmm. with the liaison to the yeah. area, with yeah. you know the town attorney maybe or somebody assigned to this. Um, and we were trying to, to that point, we were trying to meet at the site, and Ms. Gavin was uh, offering to arrange for that. Can we uh, arrange for that meeting? I, I, I have begged for it. I'm happy to attend. So, um, are, are you looking yeah, at these pictures? <laughs> Do you see the erosion? I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I think you Wait, said there's another stack behind you. That the plan called for taking away the debris, but I see a pile of bricks here. Is that left? I over stepped on rebar problem? today in glass. Yeah, this this is from removed. today. No question. But that's, that's, that's But that was upland, and it even says on here. So it even says on here to remove those those bricks and rebar. I mean, if but, yeah, the permit's if, not closed out, that's this is part of the permit. In order to close it out, that has to be. It's removed. a nap. We have to travel through there. It's 20 feet. There are kids that live on the back of that. They're, we're stepping on glass. We're stepping on a porcelain toilet today. You could see that. These were taken this morning. This, this, that's, on, look, that's an easy fix. That just shows the negligence that the homeowner took, a well, lack of care or respect for our waterways. That's what these pictures show. Well, yeah. Uh, and nobody's looking at them. I'm not going to get into that or disparage anyone. If somebody had the right to remove that bulkhead and in doing so created a problem and violated the code, as you say, um, then that's a code compliance issue. And maybe a code enforcement needs to look at that. If they did indeed, if there's this clear causal relationship that you claim, then maybe that individual could then be made to remove the sediments that came from their property. 
if it can be if it can be shown. But again, that's not the town board. That's ordinance enforcement. Do you want to see the drone picture showing? Uh, and I've seen lots of pictures. Okay. Uh, I'm sure I've seen that drone picture too. So, uh, you know, maybe code compliance, Marty Shea, somebody from the attorney's trustees. office. Yep, I'll, I'll uh, be involved. And in, in the trustees certainly. Who, who is going to set this meeting up? I can, I, my office can. I can coordinate. We were setting up the meeting on site. Um, there was an issue at one point trying to get people together, and the tides weren't weren't working for for Mr. Warner and myself at one one day, and then so we were, we were trying to set up a meeting at at the site. If you I don't know if you want to if you want to be at that. For yeah, that's, I, if I'm going to attend, I prefer to see exactly up yeah. close what is happening there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. But Marty needs to be there. Yeah. Somebody from ordinance, trustees have to be there. Yeah. Let's get everybody out there. You can set it up. Yeah. Let me know. Coordinate with Jackie in my office so that I can be there. You got yeah. it. I think uh, you know the liaison for that area, yeah. Councilman Skivoni, yeah. should be there. I will invite somebody from the DUC if they want to attend also. Yeah. Can Can I ask on another point to this? If I don't, I'm, I. I don't think anybody here is saying that it didn't fall from that property. I think we all know it fell. If that wasn't there, I wouldn't be here. It's a direct result of the bulkhead removal. It happened, his, this plan failed within a four month period of time. Why are we fighting so hard? Why don't we go to the homeowner and say, you removed the bulkhead, we need to clean up the, the mess, and put a land containment back. Why is this such a, a, a foreign I can concept? tell you that our senior environmental area uh, analyst is not saying that that's what happened. Right. He, you know, I specifically asked him that. You gotta go look at it. Yeah, it's, so, it's insulting. You should be all insulted when you go to see. what I've had people gasp. They said, how could this? How do you, you I, see I am, the land? I am more than willing to go and take a look at it. And I, I think Councilman Schiavone should go and be at that meeting. Jim's going to set up this meeting. Um, you know, normally this is a three minute at this town board. Um, this has been easily 10 or 15. I'm trying I know you to are. allow I you to fun. fully vet your issue. We will, you know, we will further explore it with the involved agencies. If it is true what you're saying, that this sediment came from this property and that the code you know, requires that those sediments be maintained, then it may be a code compliance issue and they could be cited and made to correct it. It wouldn't involve this board, right? So we're gonna have ordinance at this meeting too. And that's the best I can do right now, yeah. okay? It's just all very confusing and frustrating. When you're, you're asking us to basically doubt our own anal analyst saying that he's wrong and he deserves the benefit of being able to defend himself in he terms of defend himself with some emails he said he was remediating a beach he was bringing it back to a beach but here at the town board he's not here right now to answer any of your questions and that's that's so not he, he gets final authority over no, but what we're hearing your see? side i think we also have to hear his as well and then it may not be something that the town board resolves. It may be resolved by a different agency within the town. Ultimately, you're looking not to place blame, but to get the water flowing again. Is that wrong? No. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, but that's your ultimate that's goal ultimate here. That's my ultimate goal. Cont contain the land and have the water flow brought back. It's I, going I, to completely close over. I understand over that. You bought a piece of property, a waterfront piece of property. That waterway has fundamentally changed. Drastically. Okay. And just one, one note, I would. I know you were talking about having the DEC come. Perhaps if they can't make it, that we still go forward with. Oh our, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't meeting. bite them, but I, yeah, I, I haven't heard. Yeah, and I understand so I that's still in process. So you know, with the with other things that are burdening our departments right now, it, it's going slower than it probably should. But nevertheless, it should be in front of the conservation board. Certainly in front of the trustee in that area. And I agree with the supervisor, you know, uh, when the, when our chief environmental analyst said there's a kind of a disagreement here in the mm -hmm. perception, right. you know, I think reasonable people can solve right. problems reasonably. Right. And I, I right. think it's the right thing to do is for him to hear that. So right. it's in the proper place and you're talking to the right people to get your problems solved. Thank you. 
All right, thank you, Tiffany. All right, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard in public portion who did not submit their name? All right, seeing none, I will make a motion to close public portion. Second. Second. Of All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, public portion is closed. Um, before we get to the resolutions, there are um, four additional resolutions uh, that I would like the board to consider uh, being added to the agenda. These are referred to as walk-on resolutions. Um, resolution 34457 is being offered by Councilman Schiavone and it would authorize the supervisor to sign a consulting contract with H2M Architects Engineers Land Surveying uh, at Al to design for a subaqueous uh, sub water pipe crossing at Ponquag Bridge and Shinnecock Canal. Um, that was the subject of a recent work session, you may remember. Um, resolution 34458 would rescind resolution 623 of 2020 um, that relates to the uh, retirement of a particular employee in the clerk's office. 34459 is um, our, our 14th warrant. This is uh, also capital CPF payroll liability. Uh, that's so we can pay the bills. And 34460 amends the 2020 adopted budget for uh, archives and historian. And um, let me just see quickly. Uh, this would. Um, Sunday, you're from, or probably more familiar with this. Um, for the archives and historian? Yes. Um, yes, we have an assistant in the historic division. Um, at the time, I didn't have the funding to complete the year, and I moved, I'm just moving some money from one, from one budget of your budget line lines to another to, another. to um, fulfill his ability to, to okay. assist. All right, so, so I'll, I'll make a motion to walk on those four resolutions. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martell. We'll need a minimum of four votes to add these to our agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that was everybody. Okay, okay moving second. on to town board. Our, uh, Councilman Martell seconded it. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go to our resolution, starting with resolution 607, offered by Councilman Scrivoni. Town Board Resolution 607 of 2020 to authorize the supervisor to execute an amendment with Jackson Dodds for invasive vegetative removal on town property. I move to uh, withdraw this resolution at this time. The CPF is not going to be, if they are going to be removing invasive species, they're going to be doing it in-house and by hand. So for now, uh, I'm going to withdraw this resolution. Okay. Madam Clerk, please withdraw that resolution. We'll move on to 625. Uh, appoint to senior office assistant position in public safety. I will make a motion to table. Am I correct there? Uh, yes, okay. I'm making a motion to table. That is not yet available for vote. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, so that, uh, when I don't specify a date on a tabling motion, it is to the next meeting. All right, so I just want to make that clear that that's understood. If it's not going to be at the next meeting, I will specify the date for that tabling motion. Uh, 637 of 2020, uh, authorize the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract extension with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County, <coughs> excuse me, for the design of a permeable reactive barrier for properties located along Pine Avenue in Flanders. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-638, co-sponsored with Councilman Schiavone, to authorize the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract extension with the Village of Sag Harbor for water quality improvement project funds. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 639 of 2020, authorize the supervisor to sign Parks and Recreation Agreement for Zumba Program. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 640 of 2020. Awards and authorizes supervisor to sign contract for furniture for Town Hall. 
Second. Seconded by Councilman Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 641, awards an authorized supervisor to sign contract for vehicle fuel um, management system maintenance and installation. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 642, awards an authorized supervisor to sign contract for, with Gershaw Recycling for private or municipal markets for the disposal and recycling of of services for scrap metal and scrap metal with refrigerant. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-643, co-sponsor with Councilman Schiavone, to re uh, rescind Resolution 2020-609 and recall and amend 219-1171. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 644 of 2020. <laughs> The 2020 notice to bidders for plumbing supplies. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 645 of 2020. 2020 notice to bidders for irrigation maintenance and repair. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. Correct. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 646 of 2020 amends the a 2020 budget for various departments. Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 647 of 2020 awards. I'm sorry, authorizes highway fund pays you go for purchase of equipment. Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-648, the authorization of cost reimbursement waiver for the ecological Cultural Initiative, Good Ground for Good Ground Farmers Market, every Thursday, July 9th through October 22nd, 2020. Second. Second by Council of Lofstead. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve. 649 of 2020. It's notice of public hearing on the acquisition of lands of Cotasuco, LLC, Noyak, and amends the CPF management and stewardship plan to include that property. Second. Seconded by Council of Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve. Town Board Road. Town Board Resolution 2020-650, Notice of Public Hearing to Consider the Acquisition of Property Located at 112 Old Riverhead Road, West Hampton Beach, for the Purposes of a Community Center. Second. Seconded uh, and co-sponsored by Council. co sponsor Councilman Martel. Okay. My apologies. Uh, seconded by the co-sponsor, Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, the date on that, again, I'm sorry, is 20, August 25th. 25th. That would... Uh, Consider the acquisition of that building for community center. All right, 651 of 2020, authorized acquisition of lands of O'Sullivan, Eichenbaum, Hampton Bays, and amend the CPF management and stewardship plan to include property. I make a motion to table. Uh, the record is not going to be closed for two weeks, so it's not eligible for voting. Um, Second. So table it to our next meeting. Seconded by Councilman Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 652 of 2020, uh, authorizing acquisition of lands of Yoon, Hampton Bays, Men's CPF Management Stewardship Plan uh, to include that property. Same motion, same second. All yes. in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 2020 653, road review application for 16 Dover Avenue LLC, Suffolk County Tax Map 0900 042 .2 043.000 situate at North Sea is accepted. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, okay, two, the walk on packet. First one is being offered by Councilman Scrivoni. ID number 34457A. Authorize the supervisor to sign a consulting contract with H2M Architects, Engineers, Land Surveying, et al. to design a sub aquatus water pipe crossing at Palm Quag Bridge and Shinnecock Canal. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 34458 rescinds resolution 2020-623. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 34459 is of warrant number 14, capital 14, CPF 14, and payroll liability. Second. Seconded by Council Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, lastly, 34460, 
amends the 2020 adopted budget for archives and historian. This was explained earlier. It just moves money around in the clerk's budget to uh, uh, for the person, the archivist. To accommodate the wonderful work that's going on in the historic division. We need we need the historian's assistant to be funded. Okay. Uh, they're doing great stuff down there. I'll okay. second that. Uh, seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, okay. Um, I, next up is other business. Um, I'd love to adjourn, but I, I would like a brief executive session. Um, so uh, if I could ask the board just to join in a, a short executive session on uh, some code compliance issues. Um, I would appreciate that, um, you know, related to COVID-19, as you guys are aware, um, we did respond to the health commissioner mm -hmm. today. Uh, we also got another letter from the health commissioner related to uh, activities in the village, um, which we are um, going to talk about. So um, I'd like to, uh, unless there's any other business, go into executive session. Is there any other business? Um, I just a, a question on that. Uh, sure. I know Mr. Murphy is left the building is is he required to no i just want to kind of want to update the board okay okay um i just because i got a text from him that he's leaving so I <laughs> yeah it's, I, I i don't think so i know it should only be a couple minutes i know that uh, members were asking for some additional information so i want to yeah. be able to provide any of that okay so um i will make a motion to end our meeting but go into a brief executive session on code compliance issues Second. Okay, second by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.